Hello, and welcome to Cases from the Coop, an educational ultrasound short from Cooper University's Hospital's Emergency Ultrasound Division. My name is Sarab Sodi, and I'm the current Emergency Ultrasound Fellow. So, I'm going to discuss a case with you. A 40-year-old female presented with a chief complaint of shortness of breath. She was obviously dyspneic, tachycardic, and tachypneic, and was recently postpartum. Since you know this is an ultrasound video, we're going to discuss the bedside ultrasound that was done for her next. The clinicians taking care of her first did a quick bedside cardiac ultrasound. They put the probe in the left peristernal space, looking for the apical, or looking for the uh, peristernal long axis. So in this axis, you can see that there is a left ventricle that's barely visible there, but you can see that the mitral valve, the anterior leaflet of that, is hitting the septum, suggesting a near normal ejection fraction in normal sinus rhythm. Additionally, you can see that the atrium is right there, the aortic outflow tract is there, and the right ventricle is up there. When you think about it, that right ventricle looks larger compared to the left ventricle, and compared to the left atrium, I'm sorry, and compared to the aortic outflow tract. Therefore, you would suspect, looking at this and using the rule of threes, that there might be some degree of RV strain. This is not definitive, but it is a good first look. Second, the person, the physician taking care of the patient, rotated the probe 90 degrees to get a parasternal short axis. In this view, you can see that the left ventricle right there is compressing what looks fairly normally, but it looks as though that septum makes it a little bit flattened, giving the left ventricle that almost D-shaped appearance, which would suggest RV strain. Additionally, the right ventricle looks a little big. Not something we usually comment on in this view, but worthwhile to think about. And finally, I would say that you don't really have a ton of movement in that right ventricle. And as a matter of fact, the septum appears to be bowing a little bit towards that left ventricle. Next, they did a apical four chamber. Now you can tell that this apical four chamber, while clearly difficult to get, is a little bit off axis. So the septum should be vertically underneath the screen. Regardless of the fact that this being a little off axis, you can see that the right ventricle up there is significantly larger than that left ventricle. You want to look for a ratio of 1 to 1, which you would measure in diastole. Additionally, you can see what's called the McConnell sign. Now, McConnell sign is named, is the eponym that's named for when you have a highly compressing apex of the right ventricle, but when the rest of the right ventricle isn't really doing much. And that is highly specific for acute RV strain. A quick word about RV strain. It's very hard to distinguish between acute and chronic RV strain. One of the things people will talk about is looking to see whether there is right ventricular hypertrophy, where you measure the size of the right ventricle. There's other ways of doing it. You can do things like TAPSI to help determine whether or not there is RV strain. However, in the setting of an acute pulmonary embolism, or what you suspect is an acute pulmonary embolism, the simpler thing is to honestly look and go searching for a DVT. If you see a DVT, when a patient has RV strain, you can be fairly confident that they have a pulmonary embolism. Additionally, if you don't see a DVT and you see RV strain, you can be suspicious of the patient having had chronic RVH. So, the, the clinicians next taking care of the patient decided to do a quick DVT study. So they went ahead and did a popliteal ultrasound. So the right there, you can see the tibia, that hyperechoic line with shadowing behind it that suggests that that's bone. Additionally, you can see this large anechoic structure with a couple more anechoic structures behind it. Now you can see that it looks like that large structure is completely non-compressible. And behind it, if you watch right there, you can see that pulsate, which would suggest that's a popliteal artery. The popliteal vein also usually lies on top of the artery, which would help make that clearer for you. Now that's obviously a non-compressible popliteal vein. So in this setting, you'd be highly suspicious about the patient having a large pulmonary embolism. So, the patient got a CAT scan, and in the CAT scan they noted a massive pulmonary embolism, and the patient was appropriately cared for and did very well. So, to sum up, if you're looking for acute pulmonary embolism, you start off by doing a quick cardiac ultrasound. You're looking for a DVT, or you're looking for RV strain. And the way you look for RV strain is to compare, in the apical four chamber, the LV to the RV size. If the RV size is enlarged, that is concerning. You can look for things like McConnell's sign, you can look for D-shaped septum, you can look for a D-shaped left ventricle and for septal bowing, and even for intraventricular interdependence. However, all of those things are a little bit harder to find. And then I would impress upon you to try to go ahead and do a DVT study next to look for a DVT if you're suspicious of an acute pulmonary embolism. 
As always, folks, feel free to reach out to us at Cooper EMUS. Feel free to discuss any comments, questions, concerns, and complaints. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.